Sign up today. The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good afternoon, folks. Welcome to the September 16th, the wonderful Wednesday edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I just past one o'clock in the afternoon. I do want you to know that I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But much more important than that, during this next 60 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. You can dial on in 877-927-6648. If you can't call in, we've got you covered there, too. You can always let those fingers do the walking. That means go ahead and send me an email, steve at tfnn.com. And if you'd be kind enough in that subject heading to please put radio show question, of course, in our Tiger's Den, well, any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on wonderful Wednesday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to Lush Show. Right now, a little bit of a mixed bag out here. The NASDAQ being the weak indice, it's trading down the index 168 points, the downside 26 in the NASDAQ composite. Otherwise, you've got the Dow up 194, the S&P 8, Russell's up 25, the New York Stock Exchange 95, the Wilshire's up 125. So everything is looking uh, pretty pretty decent, but we'll go see what the signals are telling us. Of course, we've got the Fed uh, that's going to release their whatever their decision is. Um, uh, at 2 o'clock, then I believe Powell might come on at around 2.30 or something like that. So we probably won't know till the end of the day as far as the market behavior, what it really means. And actually, I would say we really won't know till tomorrow morning, till we really see how futures trade overnight out there. But let's go take a look and see if there's any kind of signals out here as we speak right now as the market's uh, uh, tipping their hat to us or tipping their something to us. So to begin, let's begin by doing the following. Let's just simply go take a look at where price, what's already transpired today. So if this is just a counter trend rally, that signal, the only signal that we're getting that it's a counter trend rally would come from the NASDAQ. The reason that we say that, you're looking at the, now on these, this set of charts here, you've got both daily, which are in blue, and weekly, which are in green. We're looking at the horizontal levels. Those are your TAS daily and weekly monthly profiles. Let me get my cursor situated. So for those of you that want to know what the current profiles are, you'll see them in the data box. They're typically in the upper left-hand corner. You'll see a little box out there. So in the NQ, the top of that daily profile is 11,532.30 out there. Price got up to a high of 11,539 and backed off. Now, the Russell 2000, is trading above the top of its bear structured profile. That was at 1545 out there. Remember, nothing more bullish than a failed bearish message. Again, this will have to be an end of day. This is a daily profile that we're looking at. If, in fact, the Russell 2000, and it's a definite possibility, if the Russell 2000 equity future contract closes back below 1545, well, then that would that would be an indication to you and I, uh, counter trend rally. At least we would have potentially two of the indices got up to resistance and backed off. Of course, we would want to see short term support levels fail to really give us that uh, signal out there. Right now, we don't have that signal in the Russell 2000. In fact, the signal in the Russell 2000 is that it wants to trade up towards its highs. Don't know whether it'll get to 60 to 1. You see a little bit of a descending trend line. It's probably like around 1585, somewhere in that range. So if price closes above 1556, that's the center of its uh, bear structured weekly profile. Well, it's more, I won't call it bear structure. We're going to call it just an equally weighted profile out there. But it closes above 1556, would suggest even higher price. 
So a bit of a mixed bag. Now, the Dow and the ES Mini have not gotten up to the top of the resistance level, the top of their daily profiles, 34.31 for the ES, 28.257 for the uh, Dow. Okay, so we've got that in place out here. The Russell 2000. I'm going to I'm going to go. Uh, we're going to take a look at the equity futures contract um, out here. So just give me a second. I'm going to pull up the daily and the weekly chart for you. So to the extent that you're going to take a signal from the Russell 2000, I want you to clearly understand its message. Not only is price trading above the top of a bearish structured daily profile out here as we speak, price on the daily basis has now regained and is trading above Stevie's green line. And that's price at 1551 right now. If price closes below that, that's another level of resistance. That could be a signal to you and I that the counter trend rally in the Russell 2000 is over. Well, Steve, what happens if price closes above 1551? Stevie's green line, it's green or red, it's green right now. That's bullish. Why is it bullish? Well, the green line tells us we have a price oscillator above zero. When price is above Stevie's green line, that tells us that price oscillator is rising, and it's rising above zero, and that is bullish. That's not to say that the Russell 2000, that, that means we're off to the races. You know, it'll go back to its 2016 highs or can't remember, 18 highs out there. Uh, no, but it can get back up to its next areas of resistance. See this little bear sash candle out here from the trading session on um, – September 3rd out here. So resistance in this case here is the candle prior to it at about 1591. So that's resistance. You see a couple bearish uh, engulfing candles in that range as well. So there is some resistance out there. But what it would signal to you that the Russell 2000 wants to move higher. So is Russell 2000 acting like this because it's it's anticipating some type of positive piece of news from the Federal Reserve? I don't know the answer to that question. But what we also know about the Russell 2000 is not only is its daily time frame bullish as we speak right now, but so too is the weekly time frame. And this is the perplexing thing. The perplexing thing is if we take a look at the pullback last week, I want you to notice this is a weekly time frame chart. And you'll see that Stevie's red line had turned green maybe about a month ago, four trading bars ago. And when that changes color what we anticipate is over a number of sessions i never know how many sessions it is i wish i did but i don't and there's no way to figure that one out but what we can do is we can anticipate that price and that line are going to catch up to each other and it is a result of that test that communicates to you and i what its intent is well guess what last week was a test and rejection of that level this week obviously we've got follow through to the upside at least through wednesday at 1 13 in the afternoon you can see here even on the weekly time frame where the resistance area is in about the 1600 range but the signal here is bullish that price should be able to make its way up to that level so is the Russell 2000 the one that's giving us a signal? I don't know. Is it the NQ that's giving us a signal? Well, let's go take a look at the NQ. We know on a uh, daily basis, price got up to the top of its profile and rejected that level and has since turned down. What it hasn't done, not that it has to, but it hasn't gotten up to Stevie's green line, which is 11,641. If price did close above the top of its profile, that would be its target. We also know that the NQ pulled back, tested its breakout level to 11, uh, 11,074 out there. And so it's trading in between support and resistance, either the top of its profile, we know that's resistance, or Stevie's green line at 11,641. But what's its weekly time frame chart doing? Well, I don't know the answer to that question. But we'll both go figure that out when we get back from this break. And then we'll go to Robert's question about Lightsweet Crude and the XOP. I'd love to hear from you, too, as well. 877-927-6648. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. If you're not currently using the TAS Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The TAS Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, TAS understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the TAS Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. 
Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the Task Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate L. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call, call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. So we were taking a look at the uh, NASDAQ uh, before we went to that last breakout there. I posed a question to you. What's the weekly chart time frame uh, doing for the uh, NASDAQ? And we can see that price is uh, taking on its Stevie Green line, the oscillator unchanged line. It's really sitting right at it right now. So if this is just a counter trend rally, that's what the daily chart is suggesting as one possibility. Uh, the weekly would confirm that by closing below Stevie's green line. It's only Wednesday, so we really need to see what this looks like on uh, Friday. But if it closes above this level, if it retakes that, well, then it depends on where price is trading on the daily time frame. The daily time frame for the NQ, it's still well below Stevie's green line. That's price at 11640 But if the weekly stays above its green line, it's telling you and I that the uh, daily wants to go make that price target. Well, Inside the NQ, what else do we know? Well, let's go take a look at its TAS market profiles out here. It's market breadth is really what I should say. And uh, how the heck did I get that? Let's get over here to the – what did I do? Well, folks, I have done something that uh, – here we go. Let me see if I get back here. Whoa. Look-a-doke. Oh, there we go. Okay, perfect. All right, Stevie just hit a uh, – a button out here. So this is for the S&P 500. We're looking in the upper right-hand corner. Uh, now we'll get to the NDX 100, and you'll see that its speed dial, by speed dial I'm referring to TAS market breadth, components is, are more are, com are more components trading above the top versus below the bottom, or is it the other way around? Well, if it was the other way around, we'd see red dials. We'd see the speed dial in the red portion of the odometer, and we don't have that. Everything is in the uh, green portion of the odometer. So the NASDAQ itself, as we speak right now, is market breadth positive? And market breadth positive suggests to you and I that price should be able to hold support. Well, let's go take a look at support on a short-term time frame because we really looked at resistance on the daily and the weekly. Here we take a look at the 30-minute time frame, which generated a nice road momentum indicator topping pattern at about 7 o'clock this morning. That led to price pulling back towards its TD9 breakout level at 11.313. And in doing so, let me pull this away here, it generated a TD nine count bottom pattern. 
Now, prices come back and it's test that level, that level being 11, 336.25. As long as the NQ on a 30 minute basis continues to close above 11, 336.25, it's got potential bottoming signal. Now, price, you can also see Stevie's green line turned red four or five bars ago. We looked at the Russell 2000. You should anticipate the same outcome. I don't know when. I don't know how many bars it's going to take out here. But price and that line are going to catch up to each other one way or another. So you've got one bottoming pattern that has been confirmed on a 30-minute time frame. The second bottoming pattern would be that there is a, and it's hard to see. Well, I'm going to make it easy to see. I'm going to get rid of the blue line because we don't need that. That was really the bottom of the, uh, let me get rid of this here. There we go. Delete it. Delete it. Come on. What's the deal here? Uh, maybe I, I don't know what's going on with the keyboard. Uh, how about remove? There we go. So now you can see you can see the uh, in, in, you can see the TD nine count bottom with bar number eight. You can now see that price is moving lower, doing less relative energy out there, and a bullish candle would generate another bottoming signal. So are we going to see a uh, a rally into the two o'clock time frame for the Fed meeting or the release of its notes? Not unthinkable based upon the bottoming signals that we have right now. Price is below a bullish structured profile out here. So it's uh, it's uh, it's more risky. I'm not suggesting to you to go take a long position inside the NQ intraday before the Fed comes on board. But there are some bottoming signals here. And um, so maybe so is that the tell for you and I? I wish I knew and, and I don't. We just have we just have data that is, is it, we don't have anything that's in agreement with each other. We just don't have a green data. What the heck's that mean? Well, what it means is if we go take a look at just, whoa, I hope I'm still online. Give me a high sign out there because I got a, a signal in my ear that uh, there is a uh, internet issue going on. Um, and Evan, I'm just going to keep talking, but uh, maybe somebody give me the high sign out there. Ruby's got the high sign. Thank you. Okay, thanks, Ruby. If we take a look at, so market breadth, we were looking at the NDX 100. Here is the market breadth for the S&P 500. You're going to see that everything is uh, bullish. When I say bullish, I'm referring to weekly, daily, 240 and 60 minute, meaning more constituents, more issues trading above the top of the box for each of those time frames versus below the bottom. So market breadth positive. The New York Stock Exchange is market breadth positive now. Now, this is going to be the first day, potentially the first day, above the zero threshold level. Right now, we have the advanced decline oscillator printing out at 47.70 out there, but it is above zero. And when it gets above zero, that says that uh, buyers are the ones that are in control of, of the market. Now, for the New York Stock Exchange, should you get a close above zero today, you really need two bars, two closes above zero to give us that uh, con confirmed um, move out there. In other words, if we just have one bar above and then it gets back below, it was a false breakout, so to speak, a false um, um, a false positive market breadth uh, reading. And it would also signal that sellers were always in control. But let's go with the information that we have right now. And the information we have right now in the NYSC a larger general pool of the market is it is back in the hands of buyers. So that's its signal. The spot volatility X is signaling to us that the market is in the hands of buyers because price is trading below the 50 day exponential moving average currently priced at 2653. Now, if price blows above 2653 today, different message out there. But if it remains below it, it's telling you and I that the ES Mini wants to at least go tag the 34-31 level. That is the top of its daily profile. But will it be able to get up there? Well, if it is going to be able to get up there, and this is where we're going to have to really pay attention, especially come Friday. By the way, tomorrow's show, Thursday, and Friday's show, I will be recording between 9 and 10. I'll fill in for uh, LP, Larry Pesavento. Out there, I believe he's off for a couple of days. I have some things that I've got to take care of as well, so it all fits out nicely. So please join me tomorrow at uh, 9 o'clock. If you've got something that you want me to take a look at because you listen during the 1 o'clock time frame, you can always email me, steve at tfnn.com, and I'll do my best to uh, get to that. But uh, join me because it'll be very helpful because, as I mentioned, the market reaction today to the Fed really may not be the real reaction. What I've noticed is usually the following day where we really get uh, how traders are interpreting the message of whatever it is that the Fed's going to give to us. Well, back to the ES Mini out here, you'll see that the top of its weekly box is at 3417. 
It's already hit 34.18 and a quarter today. So we know that there's a resistance. It's right in between resistance, which is at 34.17 and 34.30 from a profile standpoint out there. Is that giving us a clue? Is that giving us a hint? Oh, I don't know. I mean, so we'd want to see some type of failure on a short-term time frame. What is a failure on a short-term time frame? Well, I'd like to use the 30-minute time frame to make that determination. And a failure on a 30-minute basis says that price would need to close below its breakout level. Breakout level is at 33.74.50. That's based upon the titty nine count pattern out there. And you want to learn that pattern. So subscribe to Mastering Probability. There's a workshop on there. In an hour's time, you'll be able to use an invaluable, a, the most valuable tool out there to help you understand where support and resistance is. So price is above that. We don't have any kind of a uh, signal. Price is also uh, trading inside all of its opening ranges. On here, we've got opening ranges for the U.S. Open, the Asian Open, and the European Open. Well, the bottom of the... Asian open last night inside the ES mini was at 33.90. Price is above that. So price is just consolidating right now. It has not given you or I any kind of a, a signal. The signal is support hasn't failed. And that's what you and I know as of 126 in the afternoon. Okay, we get back from this break for Robert. We're gonna go take a look at XOP and light sweet crude. Be right back. Back in the day, I joined Hotel California in 2006, and like many of you, was drawn in by, Bam! as well as, whatever you think about, you bring about whatever you focus on grows. You see, I believe that everything in life happens for us, not to us, and Tom ignited the fire within me to want to learn how to master the markets. So how did I go from knowing nothing about technical analysis to becoming the number one market timer for the S&P 500 in 2018 and the number two market timer in 2019? Simply put, I hired coaches with a proven track record, which led me to a whole new set of tools that I created to interpret the message of buyers and sellers. I would love the opportunity to teach you this award-winning set of tools and to help you improve your market timing. You can test drive my newsletter service, Mastering Probabilities, for the next 30 days with no risk to you. Plus, you'll gain access to archive workshops that'll take you step-by-step -step through my system. Sign up today by going to the homepage of TFNN.com and selecting Mastering Probability in the newsletter tab. If you're a trader in the market looking to find the path that leads to maximizing profits while decreasing risk, then now is a great time to try out Dave White's daily trading service, The Path of Least Resistance. Through the use of options and equity trades, Dave advises his subscribers on a daily basis of the current market conditions and what possible trade setups are on the horizon. The Path of Least Resistance is published every trading morning, often with updates intraday when initiating trades or closing out positions. Dave White has advised his clients of some outstanding winning options and equity trades in recent months, and now is a great time to try it out for yourself. New subscribers to the Path of Least Resistance receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the types of options and equity trades that are available by signing up for the Path of Least Resistance today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com and selecting the newsletter tab. Sign up today. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed Designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, uh, folks. So Robert B. Uh, writes in, and uh, Robert says, I'm interested in going long crude oil. 
and the XOP. Uh, would you please provide support resistance daily for both of these instruments? So, uh, here is the uh, daily equity future di di equity di daily futures contracts for light sweet crude. There's still four trading days left in October out here, but in essence, Robert, you really want to be paying attention to the uh, November contract. That's going to be panel number two on the lower portion of my screen from the left you'll see in each of these contracts here so we've got uh, october november december and january of 2021 out here and you'll see in each case price pulled back to um trend lines so where price found support well let me pull the uh, chart over here uh for the on the daily time frame was the uh, trend lines now you're asking for support and resistance the daily time frame for the november contract support is 37.29 that level clearly held and resistance is 39.43 Price is traded at 4023. Let me just expand this chart out here. And so now you've got to do a reward risk scenario. Just like the trend lines in Light Sweet Crude held support, the question is will the descending trend lines act as resistance? And they're in the $42 area. So I don't know if the reward risk makes sense, uh, Robert, uh, but uh, maybe it does for you. And at least you've got support, you've got resistance, and you're going to go take a look at that trend line resistance out here. Let me pull over my other chart here for Lights We Crude, see what we can see. So no bottoming signal, no pattern that Stevie uses to identify the bottom, just those trend lines out here. Our price is right now trying to get above Stevie's green line. It's really red, isn't it? So if price can get above it, see how the line changed from green to red? When that happens, when it changes color, what do you and I anticipate? That price and Stevie's green red line are going to catch up to each other. Well, that is what has unfolded here today. It's what you're going to expect to anticipate inside the NQ for its 30 minute time frame. I just don't have the time frame as to when that's going to occur. But here, if price can close above 39.72, well, that would be bullish out there. And that would suggest that there is more rally or counter trend rally to come. Well, that just takes you back to those descending trend lines. You can't see it on this chart out here, but you can see it on the other chart that we took a look at. If price can get above those trend lines area, those trend line areas, then price would make a move to 43.89. So that's what I see when I take a look at light sweet crude. Let's go take a look, and that was the November contract that we were looking at. Let's go take a look at the XOP. In the case of the XOP, let's open this up. What do we see? Well, what we see out here is a TD nine count bottom, and that's a beautiful thing. That occurred actually on the bar following bar number nine, so that was September the 11th out there. Also happened to be wave number seven, that's letter G that's on my screen. So both of those, and this all happened above a breakout support area, of 38.85, daily time frame that you and I are looking at. So if price can close above Stevie's uh, on a daily basis, uh, it close above Stevie's red line. Let me give you that number out here. Let me get the uh, data box. Let's pull the data box. So Stevie's red line out here is, where is it on this screen? Uh, sorry, folks, I'm just looking for where did that go to 4713. Thank you. Um, so 4713 is the number. Uh, so if you're asking me um, which of the instruments, you know, are giving you the better signals, I like XOP. It's got that nice bottoming uh, signal out here. No reason that I can't run to 5322. That's going to be your TD9 breakdown resistance level. Let's come over to Stevie's other charts. I want to give you the profiles for XOP on our three time frames. Give me a second, Robert, just to get back to uh, those out here. So let's put up XOP, see where price is trading. So this is going to give us our other levels, our potential other levels for... Man, why isn't this working? go um for the daily and the weekly time frame so the daily shows you've got resistance out here at 4761 that's the top of the daily box and the bottom is 4472 you're trading at 4766 so closing above 4761 today uh would give you a uh, signal of a uh, of a change in trend at least a change in trend to get up to 49 49.91 49.91 happens to be the bottom of the uh, daily profile. Price can get inside there. Then you can see you run all the way up to the 58.17 area. So I've given you the data that you've asked, Robert. This has a valid bottoming signal out here. And it's above um, both Stevie's red line as well as the top of its profile. And this would be the one to go ahead and, uh, and, and take a uh, position in. 
your stop. The average true range over the last 10 trading sessions is a buck 73. Please multiply a buck 73 times either 1.272 or 1.618. The reason that we expand the average true range is because uh, all this is going to do is affect the number of shares, your position size. So a larger stop just means fewer shares because we always risk the same amount. What's the same amount? The same amount is 1% of your free working capital. If you've got a million dollars, it's 1% of that. If it's $10,000, it's 1% of that or 100 bucks out there. If it's $10 million, it's 1%. That becomes your risk. Let's do this based upon $100. Let's assume that 1.618 times $1.73 was 3 bucks. I know it's not, but just to make math a little bit easier, you would take your $100 risk, divide it by 3, that would give you 33 shares to purchase. 33 shares. That would be your position size. If your stop was only $2, well, that would be 50 shares. So see, the stop that you use, you want to use a wide enough stop. There are people that use tight stops out there. And it just makes me want to blow my brains out because that means that we're telling the market that we know where price is going to go. I haven't met that person yet. I haven't. Even though I sit here during for an hour and share with you where price is headed to, what we use is we use tools that give us support and resistance, topping and bottoming signals, uh, momentum. Uh, and what it does is it gives us a high probability as to how the market is communicating to you and I at that moment in time as to what its intention is. So in the case of, uh, in the case of uh, XOP position sizing, even though we kind of got off the XOP side, there's nothing more important that I can say during this hour that you and I share with each other out here than to truly understand position sizing and stops out there. You see, if you take the average true range over the last 10 trading sessions, a buck 73, that's just the average daily move. Heck, today, inside XOP, it's more than a buck 73, right? That's why we use an expansion of that, because the expansion says, hey, we just know what the average is. And if you expect average, you're going to get poor results out there. So we expand it, knowing that it just simply we're still in the trade. We just have fewer shares out there. And then that gives us a much more freedom to be able to interpret, analyze, make adjustments, or what have you out there. So, Robert, I hope that helps you out with regard to XOP and uh, perhaps the uh, type of stop that you should be taking a look at. And if the reward risk doesn't work for you, then don't enter into the uh, trade out there. LB writes in. He says, hey, Steve. Hey, LB. I went long ESPR. So let's get up. Uh, that's not ESPN, but ESPR. So uh, let's go see what ESPR is. It is Esperion Therapeutics. So let's continue reading the question out here. That is, I went long yesterday. I'm looking to hold this short to medium term. Could you give me your thoughts, especially for the short term? So, uh, yeah, let's go take a look at what the charts are communicating to you and I. You've got a brand new profile out here. Uh, that has uh, formed today. It's bullish in structure, and that says that support is between 3636 and 3721, and resistance on a daily basis is at 3892. LB, you're going to have to wait till we get back from this break, but we will finish taking a look at Esperia Therapeutics. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. 
Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, uh, folks. So we're taking a look at Asperian Therapeutics, ESPR, is a ticker symbol. We're doing that for uh, Lee, who's in a long position. So, Lee, um, again, you want to be focused on 3636. That's uh, ultimate support inside uh, this. It's because of its new daily profile. If price closes below that, and it may, if price closes below that, you should expect price to move back to 3195. By the way, your average true range on this instrument is a buck 85. How did I come up with 3161? We're going to take a look at both the upside and the downside here for Lee. Well, that's because that's the TD9 count breakout level. So there's other areas of support. You've got the bottom of its daily profile. You got Stevie's red line, which is uh, really just below the bottom of that box. That's at 3588. So we'll say if there's a close below 3588, you would anticipate 3195. To the upside, 48.39 is its TD9 breakout level. So that's where price would appear to be. Oh, by the way, there's a TD9 count top that is in place out here. And that was the reason why I went ahead and uh, focused. And that's still a valid pattern. We don't have a close above the high of that uh, TD9 count out here. Uh, so it just says caution. That's all. It just says caution at this stage of the uh, game. You got that nice bullish structured profile, and that should contain price. And if it doesn't, you know, then it's giving you a signal of, oh boy. Uh, well, the oh boy is 3195. Uh, oh, let me give you the. So on the weekly time frame out here, what you do like is price is trading above Stevie's red line uh, for it. So you'd like to see it stay above that. And that could then, if you get a close above Stevie's red line, uh, this week on Friday, that would signal move to the top of its profile. So that really becomes your target, your price target, 43.65. So I've given you the downside target. If price is able to close above 38.92, the top of that daily profile, that signal would be a move up to 43.65. So LB, I hope that that helps you out. Best of luck with that trade. Let's go to a caller. Uh, we've got uh, well, we got Jim in Palm Harbor. Jim, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you today? I'm doing good, Steve. How are you? Very well. Thank you very much for uh, asking. And the uh, the symbol the symbol you want to look at is BG, which is uh, Bunge Limited uh, or Bungie Limited. Uh, tell us what you're doing. How I can help you? I was looking to get in it uh, sort of as a swing trade. Uh, it's competitors ADM. They're in the agri business and. Uh, uh, also, transportation of food and oils, food, uh, edible oils and things. And uh, it looks like it's based out in sort of a flag pattern on a daily chart for the last little bit. And it's between a range of uh, like, uh, I think it was 45.16 and uh, uh, up a range of 47. And it's been doing that for days and days. And I, I was just wondering uh, what you thought about a possible trade what your thoughts are on it 
So, you know, definitely the sideways movement that we see out here. Um, it hasn't. Uh, so the bottom of the profile, bottom of the daily profile, Jim, is 45.89. And that hasn't held price. Price has been able to get below it um, right around a floor. It looks like about 45, 45.36, which is really the center of its weekly profile and resistance being somewhere in the 47.77 area. So you've got a little bit of a consolidation out here, but you can see a series of higher highs and higher lows on the weekly time frame. Um, your resistance level on the monthly time frame. And so why, why is price stalling up at this area? And the reason might be because the top of the monthly profile is where it's stalling. And that is at 46.51. So we can see over the course of the last three months, Jim, that uh, price has tagged that level, fallen back, tagged it, fallen back. And now this month it's doing the same type of a thing out here. So it's up at resistance. And I always have a hard time suggesting that somebody buy uh, an instrument when it's really right at resistance because it could easily, you know, turn around and head uh, lower out here. As we look at my other chart, so any questions about the profiles, we'll leave the profiles, go and take a look at my other time frame charts out here. But can you can you see the monthly resistance level at 46.51 area? Yes. Uh -huh. Yeah, so and, that's, that's going to be a real I've, I've key had, that price has to overcome for you. Yeah, I've had some pretty good luck with uh, flag patterns before, and I just uh, was considering uh, maybe it would break to the upside eventually, but I... I'm like you, I'm a little nervous about it, but that's why I want your opinion on it. So, uh, so okay, so let's go with your, you've had success with the flag pattern. So on the flag pattern, that's not something that I trade, so I would like you to teach me if you wouldn't mind. Where would your entry point, approximately where would your entry point on that pattern be? Do you, do you have a, uh, have it a would, price? It would be at the, at the breakout level of uh, like about 47 69 or so got it so so you would use the flag pattern um and not try to buy let's say the bottom or support but you would use this as a momentum move correct right right okay it's, it okay. would have to break out of the uh the month like you said the monthly resistance level it would have to be uh a new high essentially and your number was 47 47 65 or 69 somewhere in there Great. Then, then, then the charts here answer your question for you. So, because I, I don't want to change, I want to say, okay, tell me, you know, tell me your pattern. What is your trade? Where is it that you would be looking to take that long position? And then that has helped me to be able to come back to you and give you very succinct information. And that is, then, therefore, you will not take a long trade until you see a weekly close above 47.77. And that is the top of its weekly structured, uh, weekly bearish structured profile out there because a close above that then meets your parameters for your flag pattern and also you would have a what we'll call a failed bearish pattern does that make sense to you oh yeah yeah okay. i, I kind of figured it that way but I, I just like confirmation from you because you're so much right on <laughs> <laughs> well some days yes and some days no but here's the other option for you now and that is to perhaps buy it on a pullback so where is support out here um, so support on this instrument would be $43 would be one level. That's my red line. That's the oscillator and change line. Below that, it's $42.15, and below that, it's $38, bucks, which is the uh, TD9 uh, breakout level. So there's another way that you could consider trading this. I'm not saying to do that, uh, but on a pullback, those would be levels of support that you would be looking to hold out there. So that's what I see when I take a Now, that was the weekly time frame. Uh, that we were just looking at. Let me just switch over. I just realized that. Let me just switch over to the daily and just see if there's anything else out here to assist you with. There's really not on the daily time frame, unfortunately. So uh, I would go with I would go with those figures. But let's leave it uh, based on you trading the flag pattern, and it'll be a close above the top of its weekly profile out there that would give you the signal that you are looking for. Okay, Jim. Okay. Yeah, I appreciate it a lot. Thank you. My pleasure. Always good to uh, hear from you. That was Jim in Palm Harbor. And that's a beautiful place in Florida, over on the East Coast. No, Palm Harbor? Palm Harbor on the East Coast? Yeah. Boy, I screwed that up, didn't I? In any event, out here, uh, Charles. 
It is on the East Coast. Okay, good. Charles wants to take a look at um, Charlie in Massachusetts. Ticker symbol INO. So we're about to go to a, a breakout here, the last break. Uh, so we'll go ahead and punch up INO on the screen. We'll go take a look at those profiles out here. Price right now trading above the top of its daily profile. Uh, that is uh, day number two. That says it wants to run higher. Well, higher to where? It's above the top of its weekly profile. So that gives us our monthly profile. Charlie, where's price headed to? Looks like 2145, but let's go investigate this with my other set of tools out there. But INO, Inovio Pharmaceuticals, looks like it wants to make its move up to the top of its monthly profile. Brand new profile, 2145 is the number. We'll be right back. With markets trading with extreme volatility and peaks and troughs everywhere, regardless of what you're looking at in the markets, this is a great time to see the type of analysis Basil Chapman delivers for his subscribers every market day with the opening call newsletter. Basil has been analyzing markets, providing his take for subscribers to his trading services since 1984. Every morning, Basil publishes an update for his subscribers, along with weekend and evening updates when warranted. The opening call provides traders a daily market overview with regard to the direction of the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, along with specific recommendations, including stops and targets. You also gain instant access to Basil's subscriber webinar archive from earlier this year, a dark cloud cover and essential market analysis. Ride the Chapman wave today by signing up for the opening call newsletter on the front page of TFNN.com under the newsletter tab. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Sign up today. gold market has taken off topside in a large way in 2020. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The gold report took profits in four of its equities in the gold portfolio in the first week of January for a combined profit of 99.2%, with two positions left in the portfolio that have a profit of 67.5% as of January 7th. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powerful by highly concentrated fulvic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Back up, folks. Dow's up 197, S&P 7. We're taking a look at uh, ticker symbol INO out here. This is the uh, daily time frame. And uh, Charlie was just simply asking, um, it's a COVID vaccine play. Where can it go in the next 30 days or so? I got it at 1580. 
and thanks and stay well. You too, uh, Charlie. You know, so everything here is is very positive. Here's the daily time frame, uh, Charlie. Today it is taking out 1478. That was a TD9 breakdown level. A close above a breakdown level says that you've got a change in trend. So this says that it wants to head higher. Let's go take a look at the weekly time frame chart. The weekly time frame chart is the Lee Corso chart right now. It's saying, hey, not so fast. Price is just simply counter trend rallied up into Stevie's green line. So what you're looking for, Charlie, is a close above seven a close above that line on a weekly basis. It's currently printing at 1748. So figure around 1750, 1760, something like that. Uh, coming into Friday, if you see a close above that, that says price can go ahead and move all the way back up to its prior highs out there. Uh, monthly basis, the chart looks pretty good. So that just simply comes back to the reference of on the monthly chart, what INO is suggesting to you is that it wants to go ahead and move up to the uh, 2145 level. So Charlie, we're going to summarize this for you. There's only one back battle that's going on and it happens to be on the weekly time frame chart for you and this is what you're going to want to watch and that's at the 17 50 ish type level and if price can close above that then it looks like it's off to the races to the upside remember those races could end at about 21 to 45 so best of luck with you for you on that uh, trade folks i wish i had uh, better clues out here as to what the markets want to do or how they're going to respond to the fed and we just don't what i can tell you is the S&P is market breadth positive for all time frames. The same for the NDX 100. Spot volatilics below the 50-day exponential moving average. New York Stock Exchange advanced decline oscillator above the zero threshold line. As of 1.56 in the afternoon, everything is bullish out there. Only the Fed can screw it up. Folks, stay tuned for two more great hours. If you're off to start your Wednesday, have a wonderful one. Tune in tomorrow morning, 9 o'clock live for the Trader's Ed Show, hosted during the Larry Pesavento Show. Take care, folks.